So if you're worried about your hair loss, you may be looking at finasteride as an option. And it's quite often that when using finasteride, you will use a dose of about one milligrams. But in this video today, we're gonna to look at some of the lesser known dosages and how they stack up against using one milligram. Hey guys, if you are new here, welcome to the Hair God YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed YouTube videos just like this one. So if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. So what you're gonna learn about today in this video is we are gonna look at what finasteride is. We're gonna look how exactly it works. Then we're gonna look at some of the different dosages of finasteride for hair loss, namely 0 0.5, one milligram and five milligrams. We're gonna look at the scientific research we're going to look at Propecia versus generic finasterides and see if there's any differences between the two. Then we're going to look at some of the side effects. Uh, then we're going to answer whether or not it's right for you in your hair care routine. And then we've got a very brief conclusion. So first things first, what is finasteride? Finasteride is an oral medication which is only available by prescription. It was initially used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyperlasia or BPH but the unintentional side effect made it popular in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia or AGA. Finasteride was approved for use in the treatment of hair loss in 1997 and it was marketed under the brand name Propecia. So how exactly does finasteride work? In simplest terms, finasteride works by inhibiting an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. It slows down and or stops its production which is necessary in reducing the amount of free dihydrotestosterone within the body. But what does this have to do with hair loss? So androgenetic alopecia is the most common cause of hair loss among men, and it's also present in females. Now, while the exact mechanism is unknown, it's a genetic disorder that's believed to be caused by a sensitivity to the androgen dihydrotestosterone. Now, DHT is a necessary hormone, especially within males. It's responsible for sexual maturation, and without it, it can cause numerous adverse sexual effects. However, when DHT attaches to the hair follicles, it leads to a process known as hair follicle miniaturization. The irritation leads to inflammation, which eventually causes the hair strands produced to become shorter and shorter. If left untreated, they'll soon fail to poke through the scalp and baldness will occur. Finasteride works by directly inhibiting 5-alpha reductase, which creates dihydrotestosterone as a byproduct when it interacts with free testosterone. The less 5-alpha reductase present, the less DHT is produced. So now let's have a look at the different doses of finasteride. Finasteride is a prescription medication, and as such, there are a few different doses prescribed and approved for hair loss treatment. The most commonly prescribed dose of finasteride is one milligram. While your doctor may prescribe finasteride five milligram, it's commonly only used for the treatment of BPH. Due to the side effects associated with finasteride use, it's best to stick with the lowest dose possible. You may still experience adverse effects, but they'll likely be less severe than if your dose was higher. So, what are the effects on prostate versus serum or versus scalp DHT levels? So before we go into the scientific research, it's important to understand what biomarkers are used. When speaking of finasteride, the three most common are prostate DHT, serum, and scalp DHT levels. So DHT is produced in the prostate and then circulated throughout the body by the way of blood or serum. It finally arrives at the scalp and attaches to the follicles, uh, follicle androgen receptors. Now, when determining how different finasteride dosages affect the body's DHT levels, these three areas are considered the most heavily. As a side note, prostate DHT levels are more commonly considered when studying finasteride's effect on BPH, though it can also be used in hair loss studies. The most common levels tested then are serum and scalp. These help us to understand how finasteride interacts with DHT in various places throughout the body. So what does the research have to say? To determine the best dosage for therapeutic purposes, numerous studies have been conducted. The results were then collected by researchers and two papers are of notable mention. I'm gonna link both of those for you in the description. 
The first was a review consisting of two clinical studies, which included men from the ages of 18 to 36. All had moderate vertex male pattern hair loss. The men in both studies were given either 5 mg, 1 mg, 0.2 mg or 0.01 mg of finasteride daily or a placebo. Ultimately, the efficacy of the 0.01 mg finasteride was similar to placebo. However, both 1 and 5 mg had significant effects over 0.2 mg. The next study followed 249 male subjects with androgenetic alopecia. And they were also given a placebo, 0.01, 0.05, 0.2, 1 or 5 mg daily doses of finasteride. Uh, This continued for 42 days. Now, scalp biopsies were taken from all participants both before and after the study, which gave researchers a good look into finasteride's effect on hair growth. As expected, the positive effects on hair growth increased as the dose increased. Now, as shown previously, serum levels decreased much more significantly than scalp levels. Why? This likely has to do with how finasteride works, as it inhibits 5-alpha reductase and reduces dihydrotestosterone within the body on a systemic level. However, the difference between the two highest doses, 1mg and 5mg, were insignificant. This means that 1mg of finasteride is sufficient to see positive hair growth results. It's likely that over time, scalp DHT levels would decrease more drastically than in the beginning. This would occur as the scalp DHT is used up and less and less is being delivered by the serum. So, uh, what's the difference between Propecia and generic finasteride? While results are important to hair loss sufferers, so too is cost. After all, brand name prescription drugs can be costly, and you could be spending thousands per year just to regrow your hair. Propecia is the brand name of finasteride and it was the only available brand until 2006. However, with more generic brands entering the market, you may be wondering what the actual difference is. Simply put, there isn't one. Both Propecia and generic brands include the active ingredient finasteride. It's the active ingredient that differs from brand to brand. Overall, this shouldn't cause any problems for patients. In fact, the majority will do just fine when switching from Propecia to generic. However, it's possible to have a negative reaction to new inactive ingredients. This is because generic brands may use lower quality ingredients as it helps them to keep their prices low. It could also just be a matter of an allergic reaction, which isn't avoidable uh, unless you're known to be allergic. Ultimately, the difference between Propecia and generic finasteride isn't something to worry about. Now, what are the side effects of using finasteride? As a DHT blocker, finasteride has some significant side effects associated with its use. The less severe symptoms include headaches, dizziness and lightheadedness, swelling of the hands and feet, and some more severe symptoms include anxiety, depression, loss of libido, difficulty getting or maintaining an erection, and a loss of ejaculatory volume. If the above wasn't troublesome enough, there's been recent findings to show that these side effects may continue even after you've stopped using finasteride. Other considerations to make are whether you're pregnant, nursing, or trying to conceive. The effects of finasteride uh, on pregnant women and infants is unknown, so it's best to avoid at all costs. The drug should also be avoided as a male if you are having unprotected sex, as birth defects may be possible. Now, are the risks worth it? Seriously, only you can answer this question. Uh, The founder of HairGuard, Will, decided for himself that the side effects associated with use weren't worth it. In fact, sexual side effects alone were enough to make him stop using it and instead consider alternative methods. And that is where the search for all-natural DHT blockers began. But since both finasteride and natural alternatives block DHT, won't the symptoms be the same? Well, the fact is natural and non-natural DHT blockers work along different pathways. And this means you can experience the same positive effects with less adverse symptoms. So when should you actually stop taking finasteride? You may get to a point where you realize that the side effects are too much. However, there are also certain points where you should stop taking finasteride and consider alternative methods. You should stop taking finasteride immediately if you experience symptoms of an allergic reaction, 
such as hives, itching, uh, redness, difficulty breathing or swallowing, swelling of the mouth, lips and tongue, nausea, and you should also seek out emergency medical attention uh, as the above symptoms can actually be life-threatening. So what happens when you actually stop taking finasteride? A common problem for finasteride users is what happens when they stop using the drug. In fact, all the hair you've gained while on the drug is lost within 6 to 12 months after you've stopped taking it. This can be extremely disheartening, but there are ways to reduce the hair loss and mitigate any ill effects. First most, you can begin to implement the natural alternative treatments mentioned below, and these can be done alongside finasteride, so when you do stop, the loss won't be so drastic. You can also excuse me, slowly reduce your dosage of finasteride over the next few months. This is best done alongside the previously mentioned tip, and it's easy to do. For example, instead of taking it every day, you can begin to take it every other day. Continue this for a month and then reduce to every second day and continue this pattern until you're taking finasteride every fourth or fifth day and then stop altogether. Well, is finasteride right for you? You may like to know whether finasteride is the right hair loss treatment for you. And while this answer will differ for each person, there are a few things to consider before making the decision. As a treatment option that covers the symptoms of hair loss but doesn't treat it, keep in mind that you'll need to continue treatment indefinitely. This could mean you'll be taking finasteride for the rest of your life, unless you want to reverse the effects of the drug. You should also remember that some side effects associated with finasteride can continue even after the drug has left your system. This can negatively impact your sexual function, which can also lead to or worsen symptoms of anxiety and depression. Finally, the drug can be costly, and considering you'll need to take it for as long as you want to see the positive results, you could potentially be out of thousands of dollars within your lifetime. Ultimately, only you can decide whether finasteride is right for you. Now, when it comes to determining the right dose of finasteride, one milligram seems to be the one. However, finasteride is not the only option when it comes to effectively fighting hair fall. What I've done is I'm going to link you a video that we did showing the eight natural ways to combat hair miniaturization. I'm going to put that in the description for you. So if you're interested in learning about the natural ways to combat hair loss, uh, make sure to check out that video. So guys, that's what we wanted to share with you today on finasteride dosages. Don't forget if you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.